Hey everybody, welcome back to Pun Fun, where we have fun with the puns. My name is Ryan and we're going to check out the finale of Loki. If you have not yet seen the finale of Loki, please be sure to do so, as there are gargantuous spoiler alerts ahead. So, did Loki do, the Lokis do bad? Did Lokis do good? We're going to get into that. We're also going to talk about how He Who Remains is not actually supposed to be Kang the Conqueror, and they did kind of mishmash it up together, but how does it make this version more complex? And what does it mean for the MCU, basically? What does all of this mean for the MCU going forward? And I know I can't predict all of it because obviously we haven't seen it yet, but there are some hints and, you know, pretty telltale signs of where they're going with this and how does it tie in, for example, to WandaVision. I'll get into that as well. Also, what it's on everybody's mind, besides the fact that there's going to be a billion versions of Kang and what does this mean and what are they, who are they? Why did Mobius unfriend Loki? I mean, let's get into it. So, we start off with both Lokis, you know, <laughs> finding the, the last, you know, castle and maybe they would have had, you know, oh no, the princess is another castle. No, there he was, you know, plain as day, this regular dude name he who remains or by other names you know kang the jerk or kang the conqueror and i mean i'm not sure who called him kang the jerk but the balls on that person dang all right so besides the fact that he has his time pack other than that he doesn't really have other powers and i mean the brain for sure i mean that's his you know the more you know also um let's rewind a little bit yeah so back to the Lokis, they're, you know, they're fighting, blah, 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 blah. They finally go and kiss. I mean, everyone was kind of like, uh, and then some people were like, wait, does this mean, you know, two Lokis had just, you know, made out? Is this like two cousins making out or two twins rather making out? And you're like, I guess it depends on what state you are to, you know, go in awe about it. But they are kind of different in the sense that like, I'm not trying to justify that. But what I mean is for these two variants to actually go forward with this, the Kang when he was offering tea for example and the fact they do have different personalities and different organs and maybe genetically similar um, they're you know their taste in different things make them you know two different individuals so for example you have one that liked sugar and his tea and the other one did not like sugar or maybe didn't like tea at all what did matter is that I don't think the kiss was actually a romantic thing I think it was just you know a ruse just to get Loki out of the way because she couldn't get him to shut up and to get her point across that this man shall, shall die. And then, you know, Swift of the table, stab it, and he is dead. He is out for the game. No more Mr. Jonathan Majors. That is not true. He'll be back, but it will be another Kang in this case. Who's going to take his place? Does this mean that Sylvie dies because there is another Kang the Conqueror in her place? Or is Sylvie doing the same kind of play that TVA did? Well, not TVA, but, you know, the past He Who Remains did with TVA's image and all that. Well, no. I'm pretty sure it's another Kang who's a lot more narcissistic and a lot more, you know, megalomaniac. Wants his image to be shown everywhere as the Conqueror. Puts up his statue like, you know, most dictators would. I don't know any dictators personally, but I mean, throughout history, that's kind of how it rolls. And there we have it. This person may be less forgiving um, and may, you know cause a bigger ripple through time anyways so did sylvie do a good thing hell no she went ahead got her nexus event uncorked cork you know kang the conqueror and unleashed many kangs throughout the universe and time itself so what does this mean for the mcu well there's actually things that are going to change like for example if we go into a spider-man movie and of course there's going to be many of them and um, we're gonna get into a little Easter egg that we think somebody heard, but we're not too sure. And shout out to you, that person that heard it. Um, you know, let's say they're in school and they're learning about the Pharaoh and whatnot. Well, you may have like Ramatut, which is an actual Kang, be in their books or be like in an exhibit at, you know, a museum in New York, for example. Or even when we see um, the internals. Wow, it took a long time to get to that. So when we finally get to see the internals, you basically may see Ramatut, you know, because they'll, they'll be going through different civilization. Do they fight him? I, you know, we don't know, but maybe you'll see a glance kind of like of the Prince of Egypt type style where he's like on the wall, you know, hieroglyphic type, you know, imagery. 
I mean, that'd be definitely very cool just to show not necessarily him himself, but like kind of like how they do with Stan Lee, just cameos that, yes, he was in person, but now it's kind of like wall arts or, you know, mentionings. And, and I think this would be very cool going down the phase four. Anyways, what's very cool again with all this and the fact that he was able to get them to fight the way he did shows, you know, what kind of power he has, you know, of persuading and manipulating people. So, besides all that, Ty, the, he who remained, um, as we mentioned, was a different character in the comic books. He was actually the last being. There was a all-out multiverse war. Um, he was the last person who saw an exhibit, like saw everything basically, and said, "Look, we can't have this happen again." So, what does this mean? Is that I'm going to create these three characters, which he did. Um, with the knowledge that I have, send them back in time to create the TVA to prevent any of this from happening again because we can't have the annihilation of everything again. So, I mean, to some degree, that is exactly what this Kang did. Um, and it's funny that they didn't say the name Kang directly. I guess there's going to be a big reveal at some point. Or maybe they'll only call him Kang when we finally see his younger version, um, which is Kang the Conqueror and not like Immortus or Ramatut or, you know, any of the other versions as well. So, what does this mean for the TVA? So the TVA now has a bigger, badder boss. They definitely had their minds, you know, wiped because this person probably, you know, went back uh, a little behind uh, what Sylvie had done. Maybe the reason why it is like Mobius doesn't recognize Loki is because maybe that's one of the things he realized Loki was the key to their defeat. So why would we hunt them anymore? Leave them alone. This means there's going to be a different timeline for all the rest of Lokis as well. Maybe kind of a freedom also for the rest of Lokis as well. But it means that we don't mess with Lokis no more. That's why Morbius has no idea who this character is. Anyways, that explains why he doesn't know him, why he unfriends him. What does this mean for season two? That's right, we got season two. Super stoked. I mean, this was announced before, but hey, we were, it was so cool to have it, you know, confirmed. Um, it may be Sylvie's story. Um, it may be also Loki trying to find her again. It may also be Loki trying to you know, convince them again what's happening. Um, anyways, we'll see down the line. So, that opening scene where we have the characters say exactly, you know, their, their little catchphrases while we see them through that montage they usually do in the beginning. Well, what's really cool is that we now know that that is universe 199999. Whereas the other universe was one that was closer and overlaid, uh, which where our variants are, you know, located. And that's where Tony found his, you know, sweet spot and was able to send all of the people or all of his Avengers, if you will, to that timeline, I guess in this case for the Tesseract and it failed. Um, and they got it and they brought it back. And what was very cool is that somebody mentioned, for example, you do hear, you know, all the Spider-Man and there's different little sound bites. And I would believe so as well, because... There's also this whole kind of rumor slash, you know, leak where we do see the um, Spider-Verse kind of art um, being shown while they were showing the credits, or not credits, but the title for Spider-Man No Way Home. So it would be super exciting to see them actually mishmash the cartoon world, especially with the what if coming along and the real world all together. Will this mean that, you know, will they come through and be a live action person? Would this mean there'll be a casting? Does this mean we might even get, you know, for the what if, for example, Captain Britain, if she comes out with Peggy Carter being Captain Britain, but like in live action, that is crazy. I think that would be dope. And it would be an awesome way to bring them, you know, kind of give their history real quick. But at the same time, when we bring them into the universe, like for example, if they open portals and they come out to fight, we know right away who they are, what they're all about. and yeah that'd be sick that'd be crazy hey i'm on that bus anyways one last thing before we go and i know we mentioned how does it tie into wandavision well immortus actually does um you know fight alongside um, wanda because they're both on the same mission are they the same strength i know we mentioned in the past episode so we're not gonna bring that up again what we do want you to, to know is that when Sylvie did go and plunge, you know, her knife within or shanked basically Immortus or he who remains. Basically, that could have also been when Wanda also opened up the book and opened up the multiverse as well, in the sense that she's now exploring the multiverse. This can all be simultaneous and basically 
uh, is why it spread it out so quick and so fast across, you know, that imagery that we saw. What does this mean is that they may team up. She may have a Kang that says, hey, I know what you're looking for. I know where to find them. I can get them to you, but you need to help me with the Hex. That is also why the TVA initially had Hexes all around. It could be that they came to a bargain. He went back in time, learned what it was, made it, made it happen. And then, you know, was able to protect the TVA to begin with. All right, guys. So we're going to wrap things up real quick with this last little tidbit, which is basically Miss Minutes. I know everyone's been talking about Miss Minutes and everyone's like, oh, who exactly controls TVA? Well, we kind of called it and actually we did call it from since episode one. Now, I'm not going to have you rewatch the whole entire episode. I actually left you guys an Easter egg in the thumbnail themselves. If you look at the thumbnail, there's one variable that actually changes, which is Miss Minute actually changing or actually going more and more into the background. Because I knew from that point on, she was actually the one controlling or, you know, taking charge of the TVA. Aside, of course, of Kang the Conqueror doing his thing um, or Immortus or he who knows all. Anyways, for those kind of insight, and also we called, you know, that they were all vari variants two episodes before they even knew that there were variants or even, you know, dropped the fact there were variants. These are the kind of knowledge and kind of, you know, insight we want to give you guys um, going along this ride on the MCU. So if you definitely like this episode, please be sure to hit a like. If you were jump scared by Miss Minutes, also please be sure to hit a like. Um... And you can also subscribe us, uh, subscribe to us as well um, for more insight and then more, you know, details of what the show is about and kind of having, you know, something really cool to talk about next time you see your friends. But another thing that's really awesome is our artist that we're having on our show. So this time we have somebody who's crazy huge. I mean, I'm still starstruck and can't believe we actually got him on our show to have the interview. It was so fun. It was amazing. We actually got exclusive to his first ever comic book, a very anticipated comic book, may I add, um, his, the person that we're actually going to interview, there's, an, there's something behind me that actually alludes to who it is. Again, it was just fun, amazing. You definitely want to tune in for that. Um, and yeah, there was going to be crazy artists going uh, forward. Again, we're all about supporting these artists and having a platform for them to shine. Also to promote what is it that they're doing because... That is what we do here at Pun Fun. We support each other. So, take care, guys. Loki was 10 out of 10 out of my books. It was a great series. I can't wait for the what ifs and the other series to follow. Next episode, following the, epi the <laughs> artist episode, we're also going to get a little bit of an insight of Black Widow. What did you think of it? Did you enjoy it? Put it in the comments below. Take care, guys. Peace.